Welcome back my friends, the Pony Panels. Now this video, although being recorded today, today being a Friday, won't be up until you see it. So, whatever day I recorded this, just be aware, you're getting it later than the date. But, we're going to talk about the third arc of the If I Am Main comic, which is a totally diversion from the last two that were heavy-handed return of old villainous forces. In exchange, we are given something lighter. Zen and the Art of Gazebo Repair. And he Yes, that is the name of the two issue arc, issues 9 and 10, which focuses on Big Mac. Yes, the big red dude with the lack of words. Except in Apple Buck Season and Ponyville Confidential. That's when he actually speaks. But, you get to hear a lot of Big Mac's inner thoughts in this one. So, so let's get to it. Uh, it's another day at the old Sweet Apple Acres, where every day Applejack is hustling. And apparently, also in Sweet Apple Acres, apparently, every day something needs repair. This time, the gazebo. And when you know it, there's no nails to repair the gazebo. So, Big Mac has to head in the town to get his nails from the local hardware store. Except, it's the summer wrap-up festival. Uh, summer wrap-up? You mean to tell me there's a wrap-up for every season here in Equestria? Jeez. And on top of that, there's a party for every single one of them. And practically any pony who's any pony is apparently here. A lot of the sub-ponies that make up the fandom's love are here. Everything from Vinyl Scratch to Dr. Eves and Ditsy Doo to, to Bon Bon and Lyra, Lyra the Buff Biceps, everybody. Heck, even, even Army 6 are having a good time. Well, it seems like an open and shut case for Big Mac besides the Cutie Mark Crusaders wanting to blow everything up with fireworks. Works until everybody at the festival seems to drag them into one fair type activity to another. From the old ball toss. Toss to helping people get stuff to... Even Spike having a miniature hustling racket selling figures of some sort. But this would be Big Mac's comic. God knows he's got a lot of love in this comic and putting one comic situation after another. And it would be Big Mac's comment predominantly, which it is, except for in comic number nine, the first of the arc, when practically the comic gets hijacked by one Princess Luna. Yes, and if it seems like I've mentioned the Princess of the Night a lot, it's because she plays a role in these comics a lot. And when you know it, Luna's just here to have a good time. Just sharing the acts of merriment, as she says. 
But we also find out she's got a mean competitive streak. And when you know it, Big Mac gets saddled up to be her partner in the tag team fair events. A pie eating competition which Big Mac hates because they're eating cherry pies. Two three legged races to the strong bell competition. Which, by the way, they all win due to Luna's dominance. But just when Big Mac feels like he's finally going to get the nails and go home, when you know it, the hardware store is closed for the festival. Let alone the Crusaders blew it off with fireworks in an earlier panel. When all seems lost, leave it to our favorite rhyming Zebra Sakura to show up and add some words of wisdom, as only she can, about enjoying, enjoying the freaky, spontaneous fun that he's had throughout the entire day of the festival. Although she understands his quest to find a needle in this haystack, Sorry for the bad pun. Pun, heck, Apple. Heck, even Big Mac says it at one point. And we even get comic throwback continuity from Pinkie Pie's hideous costume in the first arc. Arc and even references to the episodes in which Every sub pony is in. Heck, you can even tell tell this town is straight up country because they call it a hoedown for the for the dance that goes way into the night. And heck, even Big Mac gets a thank you kiss from the princess of the night. Oh, all of this while hearing Big Mac's internal eternal monologue as he shows con concern for the Crusaders and the concern for everybody else and just the need to get the job done. He just can't. But you have a mile a minute for a laughter trying to watch him do it. This is one of the most entertainingly funny things I've seen out of the FIM comics thus far, let alone the show. It's panel for panel hijinks, and I couldn't have it any other way. It's a classic snowball effect plot done expertly and animated beautifully. The original writer and artist for the first set of four comics make their return for this set. And it's beautifully noted, even with sub, sub ponies getting a cover of their own splash for this one. And it really shows. The only negative I have of this arc and trust me, there are very few negatives, is the fact that it has a Dexter's Lab twist ending that you might see coming, but it's only a minor nitpick. These two comics, especially Luna's ste scene stealing, stealing betrayal in issue 9, is an absolute winner. That's why I give Zen and the Art of the Gazebo Repair the highest quality recommendation of a perfect 6 out of 6 on the Harmony scale. Sure, there are a lot more serious comics in the main line, line and even Friends Forever, but if you need a funny little diversion, especially issue 9 will be a trip. But the entire two book arc is well worth the laughs and finally gives Big Mac his time in the sun. Or should I say moon.
Find peace in your own nirvana. Until next time, when we do some high school flashbacks with this, you with all Cadence Shining Armor Arc. That should be fun, right? See you later.